Hello, my name is Christian Mayans, and this video talk is about the paper Quantum Secure Message Authentication via Blind Unforgeability. This is joint work with Gorian Alagic, Alexander Russell, and Fang Song. Let me start with a short introduction. On this painting, you see a woman who is receiving a letter. So we can imagine two security-related thoughts going through her head right now. Um, the first one is, okay, on the bottom of the letter, it says, sincerely, X. But how can I know that this letter is really from X? Anybody could have written that there. And the second one is, okay, this courier looks really sketchy. And probably he has been on the road for five days or something. So anything could have happened to this letter in between X sending it and me receiving it. Nowadays, um, we can re reassure the recipient of a message uh, with regards to both of these concerns by the use of digital signature schemes and message authentication codes. In the re remainder of this talk, um, I will focus on message authentication codes for simplicity of exposition while all the security notions, etc., uh, apply to both of these uh, kinds of schemes. How does the message authentication code work? So let's assume Alice wants to send a message to Bob and to authenticate it, she shares a secret key K with Bob. She begins by computing uh, the so-called Mac tag using the Mac function, her secret key and the message. And then she sends the message together with the tag to Bob. Upon receiving a message tag pair, Bob uh, uses the message and his copy of the secret key to recompute the tag, and if it doesn't match the one he received, he rejects, otherwise he accepts. The security property that we want from such a map um, is called unforgeability under chosen message attack, or UFCMA. Works as follows. We consider a message authentication code secure if no forgery adversary can be successful in the following game. In this game, the adversary gets Oracle access to the Mac function. We can make a number of queries, so send um, messages to the Oracle and receive tags back. And in the end, um, the adversary has to submit a message tag pair, M star, T star. And he wins the game if this is a valid message tag pair and if it is um, distinct from all the queries he made to the, to the Oracle. In this paper, we study quantum access security of Max. So that means that instead of providing a classical oracle for the secret keyed Mac function, we provide a quantum oracle for it to the adversary. That means we give oracle access to the functionality defined here. And uh, one obvious question that one might ask is, why would we, you consider such a setting? There's a couple of answers to, to it. First of all, um, one answer is because we can. So as theoretical cryptographers, we are often interested in uh, as strong as possible security, and this turns out to be possible. Um, second, um, it, there's also a motivation from uh, post-quantum composability. So for example, if um, we use obfuscation to publish um, as an obfuscated circuit for the um, for the secret key function, then of course a quantum attacker can implement it on their quantum computer and evaluate it in superposition. Finally, a third reason might be physics. So this is maybe a bit less likely to uh, to actually realize this risk. But um, if you imagine, for example, a smart card that has a, a secret key hard coded in it, uh, then one might imagine an attacker that that freezes this smart card, it cools it down to near absolute zero temperature and hopes that it starts to behave in a quantum way. So first of all, let's try um, kind of the naive generalization of UFCMA. So let's call that uh, unforgeability under quantum chosen message attack. So here's an example attacker. Um, so this attacker just prepares a uniform superposition of messages, um, uses the oracle to 
uh, converted into a uniform superposition of message tag pairs and afterwards applies a measurement to obtain a random message tag pair and outputs that. So uh, two thoughts about this. First of all, clearly this should not be counted as a break of the scheme because it's clearly possible for any Mac and it's in some sense just a quantum analog of um, the algorithm that samples a random message, um, queries it, and then outputs that the, the resulting message tag pair. On the other hand, um, it turns out that the, the output is almost distinct from the query, right? So it's almost orthogonal to the query. So therefore, somehow UFCMA doesn't seem to make sense anymore. Okay, so we cannot generalize UFCMA in a straightforward manner, but then how can we judge whether a function is um, unpredictable for quantum algorithms? How do we identify a successful forging adversary? We've just seen a non-example, so uh, an example of an uh, attack that we shouldn't count as successful. Um, here's one that we, that we should be worried about. Let's specify a Mac by choosing a, a random periodic function with period pk, but then puncturing it at the input pk uh, and set the output to zero there. So now there's the following adversary. Uh, we first start by running the so-called period finding algorithm, which is a subroutine of Shor's algorithm to find the period pk. And afterwards, we just output the pair pk comma zero. This clearly should be counted as a successful attack because we have kind of planted this vulnerability there. And this is not a, the, the analog of a classical attack that also should work. Here are some additional problems that, that arise when generalizing UFCMA to the quantum case. First of all, um, there's the so-called no cloning principle that says that a quantum state cannot be copied. So this implies that we can't even think about the straightforward generalization in the sense that we cannot compare the output of an adversary to their queries. And in addition, if we were to find a way to compare the output with certain messages, then such a comparison would most certainly involve quantum measurement, which changes the state that is being measured. So then we could only do at most one, of, one such comparison. Let me move on to our results. Here's an overview. As I said, we study unforgeability under quantum chosen message attacks. In this setting, we propose a new security definition, which we call blind unforgeability. Um, the motivation for proposing a new definition is that the previously um, proposed definition by Bonnet and Jandry from a Eurogroup paper from 2013 um, is kind of insufficient to capture all possible uh, quantum attacks. So this was, um, has been uh, suspected before, uh, and we confirmed this by exhibiting a Mac that is uh, secure under this previous definition, but um, on the one hand, kind of intuitively broken, and on the other hand, also insecure under our new definition. We go on to characterize um, blind unforgeability by first proving that it also implies the previous definition by Bonnet and Jandry, but also by proving that random functions on the one hand and also uh, the Lamport one-time signature scheme are uh, secure under it. Finally, we also prove that the so-called hash and Mac or hash and sign paradigm uh, preserves BU security if we choose an appropriate hash function. Let us quickly recall the previous uh, security definition by Bonnet and Jandry. So their approach was as follows. They just say, okay, fine. We cannot compare a forgery with the query transcript. So let's just ask a little bit more from the adversary. Let's just ask them to output Q plus one valid message tag pairs. So in that sense, if they um, make Q queries and output Q plus one message tag pairs, one of them has to be fresh. This has a couple of nice properties. For example, it's uh, equivalent to UFCMA in the classical setting. And also a random function or a random oracle is 
busy and forgeable. So already before our work, there were some doubts in the literature about whether this is the correct definition uh, of security. Uh, this was mainly um, suspected in a paper by Garg, Ewan, and Jandry, um, and later also uh, elaborated on in the quantum lightning paper by Jandry. So here are the problems. So first of all, say an adversary can make a, a genuine forgery for a Mac, but to do that, uh, the adversary has to make a number of queries and then completely measure the whole state and thereby destroy it, right? Then they can maybe output the final forgery, but not, you know, number of queries, many other valid message tag pairs. In addition, you know, maybe such, a, such an adversary can uh, make a number of queries inside a certain region of the message space and then make a forgery outside of that reason. So no matter whether we can compare, et cetera, um, this should really clearly count as a forgery, right? In fact, just looking at these options, it should be easy to come up with an example uh, where, where this happens. Turns out that that is not that easy, however. And uh, one of the reasons is that, that for example, this period finding uh, attacker that we talked about doesn't work to, to show this. And this is because if a quantum measurement succeeds with good probability, then the disturbance is also limited. So in this period finding uh, example, the adversary makes a measurement to determine the period. But afterwards, because that's a, that succeeds with good probability, they can still rewind their computation and uh, recover a message tag pair from their query. In uh, the quantum lightning paper, there was in fact uh, constructed a Mac that is secure according to the Boni Jandri definition, but insecure according to a one time uh, security definition put forward by Garg, Yuan, and Jandri. Um, but this was assuming indistinguishability obfuscation. And um, I don't think one can, one can call it an, an, an intuitive uh, example. This brings me to our first contribution. We construct a Mac that kind of unconditionally breaks the Boni Jandri definition. Here it is. The message space are the n plus one bit strings. Um, the first bit we call B and the rest is X. And the output has two parts, which are both functions of, uh, of X determined by B. So for B equals zero, the first part is a random periodic function with period P. And the second part is a uniformly random function. But if B equals one, then the first part is um, a uniformly random function, except if the input is P, then we set it to uh, the all zero string. And the second part is just um, uh, identically zero. This is kind of complicated, but um, in summary, the message space is uh, split into two parts determined by the first bit. And if the, that first bit is zero, then we have a random periodic function that's kind of shielded by uh, another random function. Whereas if B equals one, then we have a random function that's punctured at that same period as a, an input. There's a simple one query convincing forgery attack works as follows. First, use the period finding algorithm to find the period P. And this is done by ignoring the, the uniformly random part of the output. And then just output the message 1P together with the all zero tag. This is a convincing forgery because the period finding algorithm uses uh, a uniform superposition over messages that start with zero while um, the forgery is on a message that starts with one. In addition, we can prove that there's in fact no efficient um, quantum algorithm that wins the Boni Jandri security game for this Mac. This is kind of difficult to prove, it turns out. And a key step is to um, show that if an attacker wants to learn anything about the period P, then kind of this ignorance of um, the random part of the output 
is necessary. So after giving this convincing counterexample, we have moved on to proposing a replacement definition, which we call blind unfordability. So how does it work? The idea is as follows. So instead of providing then an adversary with a proper oracle for the MAC function, we provide them with a modified uh, oracle that is kind of blinded in, in, in a certain random subset of the inputs. And afterwards, we ask the adversary to forge in one of the blinded spots. More formally, um, we define a set B epsilon, which is um, a random subset of um, the message space. And each message is put into this into the set with independent probability epsilon. Now we define the blinded MAC oracle by sending every message to its cor corresponding tag if the message is not in the blinding set, but uh, by returning the bottom symbol if the message is in the blinding set. The definition is now, the definition is now as follows. A message authentication code is called blind unforgeable if no adversary can output a valid message tag pair with the message being in the blinding set when provided with the blinded oracle. So great, we have come up with a candidate replacement. Let's check whether it actually works. So first of all, we can prove that it's equivalent to UFCMA if we restrict to a classical oracle. So that's reassuring. Also, we can prove that a random oracle is uh, blind and affordable. So the other standards that needs to check. We also prove that it implies the previous definition, which um, builds additional confidence. Um, and finally, it classifies all the examples that we, we know correctly. So here's the, the first example that we looked at, the kind of the, the stupid forgery adversary that shouldn't be credited with breaking. Let's see whether it um, succeeds in the blind unforgeability game. We could, for example, consider this for a random function. Um, if we now consider a blinded oracle, then the output of, of, the, of the random oracle for a blinded input is independent of um, any adversarial state. So this adversary clearly has to fail. Now let's look at our constructed MAC that we've uh, used to show the insufficiency of the bony gendry definition. So here, let's just take a very small value of this epsilon. That means that um, the oracle is almost the, the, the correct one. And the period is a global property of the MAC. So the period finding algorithm would still almost succeed with the same probability as if, as if um, the adversary world was provided with the correct oracle. The forgery message, on the other hand, which is completely separate from, um, from the query that the ad adversary makes, um, is blinded with independent probability epsilon. So this ad adversary, in fact, uh, succeeds with small probability. Here are some additional results that we have about um, this new notion. We define a new security notion for hash functions, which we call Bernoulli preserving. This generalizes collision resistance to the quantum setting, and it strengthens the previously pr um, proposed notion of collapsingness. Using a hash function that is Bernoulli preserving, we can prove that the so-called hash and Mac paradigm is blind unforgeable. Furthermore, we construct such a Bernoulli preserving hash function or, um, by proving that a contraction by UNRU based on LWE is actually um, Here are a number of additional results that we have um, about our new security notion. We define a new... Here are a number of uh, additional results. We define a new security property for hash functions, 
which we call Bernoulli preserving. This property generalizes collision resistance to the quantum setting, and um, it strengthens a previous such generalization, which is called collapsiness. Using this notion, we can show that uh, hash and Mac instantiated with such a, a hash function is uh, blind and forgeable. And we can also show that um, a construction of a collapsing hash function by UNRU that's based on the LWE assumption is actually even uh, Bernoulli preserving. In addition, we can show that Lamport signatures are one time blind and forgeable um, if they are instantiated with a random oracle. To prove these results, we use mainly two tools. First of all, we have a simulation lemma that shows that an attacker doesn't behave very different um, if provided with a blinded oracle with small blinding parameter uh, compared to an unblinded oracle. And as a second tool, we use um, the superposition representation of a random oracle uh, by Jandri. This we use extensively. So both for the proof of uh, Boni Jandri security of the separation example, um, as well as for the implication, uh, blind unfortability implies Boni Jandri unfortability. And for the security proof of the Lamport signature scheme, we all um, employ the, uh, the superposition representation of random oracles. This brings me to my last slide. Here's the summary and some open questions. As, as we have seen, um, there is a Mac that is secure according to a, um, the previous definition by Bonet and Jandri, but allows for an intuitive forgery attack. So it, it, this definition really needs to be replaced. And we have such a replacement, which is called blind unfordability. Blind unfordability has a lot of nice properties and classifies all um, the known examples that we have correctly. Here are some open questions. First of all, um, the security game for blind unfordability is not very natural. This is because the adversary is provided with um, this blinded oracle, which is kind of different from the actual functionality that we're, um, that we're testing. So one question is uh, whether this can be fixed somehow. And another open question is, are, are popular schemes uh, blind and forgeable? So what we know is that um, the Lamport one-time signature scheme, um, as well as some pseudorandom function-based uh, Macs are secure. But uh, these are the only examples for now. Thank you very much.